I'm trying a new space. Um, I have a PC behind me now, so I can put things on my monitor. See, I'm theming my reviews. Isn't this fun? I don't know. Let me know what you think. <laughs> After a one-night gala performance last year, Sondheim's Old Friends has returned to London, and... God, it is absolutely stunning. Although he is sadly no longer with us, Sondheim's music will last forever. He was an absolute legend of musical theatre. And while admittedly I don't know every single show in his back catalogue, the shows that I do know, I completely and utterly adore. Sweeney Todd, Sunday in the Park with George, Into the Woods, all of these shows mean so much to me and seeing them in this format and done in this way is so beautiful. Now because of what this is and because it's a more concert style of performance, I'm not really going to review it in the typical way that I would review something where I talk about like the story, the music, duh, 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 and kind of structure it that way. Instead I've kind of picked out all the songs basically in order that most stood out to me or most attracted me and that way I'm going to talk about each number, what they do, why it was so effective, and yada yada yada. You get my drift. That's how we're doing it. That's the structure. That's how she slays. That does mean this review will probably be a little bit spoily, but I mean, if you're going into this, you probably know most of Sondheim's songs, so yeah. <laughs> so why did this Sondheim concert work so well for me? Let's find out. But, if you haven't seen my face before, hi, I'm Ellie, I talk about theatre! I am the most chaotic theatre person on the internet! I do reviews, I do discussions, I do video essays, and if any of that sounds interesting to you, please consider hitting like and subscribe, it really helps me, it helps out the channel. But, let's talk about old friends. So, this concert is being hosted by Bernadette Peters and Leia Salonga, two absolute legends in their own right, and just sitting there in the audience being able to watch them on stage is good enough. I am there. Please. Oh my god. And paired with all of this beautiful Sondheim music and the rest of this absolutely phenomenal cast, this is a concert that you cannot miss. I'm saying that off the bat. Do not miss this, because it is brilliant. Not only have they taken Sondheim's back catalogue, taken all of these wonderful songs, the most iconic songs, they've also flipped them on their heads, they've given them new meanings, new intentions, by reframing it or restaging it, and by taking it out of its original source material to restage it. Because of this, all of these numbers feel so fresh, and then it's paired with this gorgeous staging as well, and it's jaw-dropping. It is a lovely night out. But let's go through this one by one. I've picked out a lot of songs. There's a lot. Honestly, almost every single number is gorgeous, perfect, stunning, absolutely everything that it needs to be, and I'm here for it. So when I say I've narrowed this down, it's not by much. <laughs> What they've done quite cleverly in this show is they've grouped a lot of the Sondheim shows together. There's moments and songs here and there that don't fit into these typical groups, but they do these kind of mashups one by one to make sure you get the vibe of each show. You have a Massive Company one, you go into the Massive Into the Woods one, there's the Big Sweeney Todd one, Massive Follies one, and then the other numbers from these shows are kind of scattered throughout. The first one you get is Company, and my... God, there are two numbers within this medley that just completely and utterly work. And that is the little things you do together and getting married today. They have given new context to both of these numbers that really, really work. It's only a slight adjustment to what it is in the original versions, but even so. The little things you do together performed by Gavin Lee and Claire Burt is such a brilliant way to kind of start the solo numbers or the duo numbers in this case. As the show opens with this massive medley of side by side, comedy tonight from a funny thing happens on the way to the forum and obviously company itself. In the original musical this is a song performed by Joanne as the couple hanging out with Bobby are getting into like a taekwondo match I think. It's some kind of wrestling I think, yes. <laughs> but they've reframed it slightly as a married couple kind of having a spiteful little argument 
And oh my god, it's glorious. Both Lee and Bert just revel in this quiet hatred of one another. It's it's brilliant. Every little spiteful intention, every single look at each other, every single like one upping is <laughs> genius. And it makes this number feel so fresh as well. And then there's not getting married today, which they've slightly reframed again. Uh, this time actually happening at the wedding instead of in the musical happening before the wedding. So we see the wonderful Joanna Riding walk out in this gorgeous wedding dress and just have her, you know, nervous breakdown. This is an intense number. It is a hard number to perform, but Joanna Riding just goes for it like it's easy. It is a joy to watch her perform this. And I love all the little glances to the wedding party and how <laughs> she's kind of getting worse and worse in her state. I love this contrast of all these joyful people to her just at the front of the stage, just pleading and begging. I love this extra chorus aspect they add to this song. Moving on, we get the Into the Woods sequence, which I love Into the Woods. I love Into the Woods. First off, we get Agony, performed uh, at the performance that I saw by Damien Hubley and Harry Apps, who was on due to the uh, disposition of Jack Yarrow. This song is always a crowd pleaser. I think it's just such a wonderful number, so comedic, and I really think it gives the performers in it a perfect opportunity to kind of one-up each other. But I think the real joy, the biggest thing about this sequence that I... I loved. It's getting to see Bernadette Peters do Little Red Riding Hood. Genius. Genius. Genius! And don't worry, you do get a hint of her doing The Witch, as, as she did in the original version, thank you very much. But I think there's such a lovely little thing about us getting to see Bernadette Peters do this different role, this role that we would never kind of attach to her in this way. And she's paired with Bradley Jaden, who... Hmm. <clears throat> <clears throat> would. <clears throat> Sorry, would. Um, I love how in the previous concert version, uh, they did a normal, you know, the wolf, he's in outfit, and then Bradley Jaden comes in, just whip off his shirt. Okay, okay, sorry. Um, I loved his performance as the wolf, uh, f f for reasons. <laughs> <laughs> he is the sexiest wolf I have ever seen. That is a sentence I didn't think would ever come out of my mouth, but there you go, there it is. And they used to have a wonderful dynamic on stage throughout this number. We also get to see her do I Know Things Now, which she plays around with wonderfully. Although I am quite weirded out that structurally, in this show, I Know Things Now comes before Hello Little Girl. So she knew things, and then she goes on the trodden path. Oh well, it's a concert, I don't care. <laughs> And this wonderful sequence is capped off by Leia Salonga getting to do Children and Listen. And she's eventually joined by Bernadette Peters. And God, this song is just gorgeous. God, I want a revival in Into the Woods. You know, not the regional revival that we recently had for obvious reasons, but uh, yeah, I want a revival of Into the Woods. Bring over the concert they did in New York. I want that. Give me that. Watching this show has just made me want revivals of every single Sondheim show. And honestly, if they brought them all over at once, I wouldn't complain. Give me more Sondheim. Inject it into my veins. I want more Sondheim. I adore these medleys throughout the show. The Into the Woods one just works so incredibly well. It gives you all the hints of all the best numbers in the show. Giving us the opening, giving us a little hint, although I would have wanted a little bit more, of On the Steps of the Palace, Agony, I Know Things Now, and cabbing it off with Children Will Listen, it's a lovely section in the show. As well as being really wonderfully staged with all different costumes, these lanterns that they're walking through the woods with, I don't know, I, lo I like a lantern. But I think my favourite medley throughout the show, and I may be a bit biased, but let me have my biases, is the Sweeney Todd medley. From what I have heard, they have stolen some set pieces from, I think it's the tour of Les Mis? So that they could still have the two side tower things. Yes, the, I'll, I'll have it on screen right now. I'm not good at describing things. <laughs> the two tower things with the doorways and the window that are straight out of the Les Mis set. So that it still has the same vibe as when it was at the sun time last year. And during the Sweeney Todd medley, these two towers push all the way out, opening up a really interesting new space on stage. 
which is so effective and so perfectly fits the vibe for the Sweeney Todd medley, which they use it for. Now, the Sweeney Todd medley consists of five songs, which I have shortened to Ballad Pies Friends Met. <laughs> Ballad Pies Friends Priest. No, try again. Ballad Pies Friends Women Feast. No, Priest! <laughs> Ballad Pies Friends Women and Feasts. No, f ah! Ballad Pies Friends Women and Priest. <laughs> Performed by Jeremy Succumb, Leia Salonga, and as well as a short cameo from Bradley Jaden, who dies. Spoiler alert. Salonga is like unrecognizable. She just completely adapts to the Mrs. Lovett role, and with her costume and wig, I straight up did not recognize her. I straight up did not recognize her. I love her quickly and efficiently with this set change and with the costume change, they just completely transport you into the world of Sweeney Todd. It's a very different vibe to a lot of the other Sondheim numbers, so I was quite scared about how jarring it would be, but no, it fits so well. Succumb is a wonderful Sweeney, with that darkness inside of him, that that blank stare, the grudge and the anger and the frustration and that need for revenge. So long as Love It is everything I love in a Mrs. Love It. So bubbly, so energetic. And their version of Priest is so joyous to watch. They have a wonderful chemistry together, even in just this one little number. Please give me a full, again, give me a revival of Sweetie Talk with these two as the leads. Come on. This is all I want now. I, I'm not satisfied with only a little taste of it. I need all of it. Put it on my plate right now. As well as this in Act 1, we also get some wonderful solo numbers. Send in the Clowns by Bernadette Peters is just heartbreaking. She slows down the show for a moment and just captivates the audience. As well as this, I think the strongest song in Act 1 is Claire Burt's version of Ladies Who Lunch. This is one of my favourite Sondheim songs. And once you've seen Patti Lapone do it, I didn't know that I needed to see anyone else do it. <laughs> but the blaseness of Claire Burt through this number, it's so... Oh, it's so good. It's so good. It's so good. And her vocals, the power of the ending, you know what, she's yelling rise, and it took every fibre of my being not to stand up in that audience. My God. My God, it's good. God, that's good. That song's not in it. <laughs> and Act 1 is summed up completely with this gorgeous rendition of Sunday from Sunday in the Park with George. And the little touches they do with the projection, they bring down this little screen where they have the painting start to form. The way it goes from being colourless to the entire stage feeling bright and vibrant, it's such a lovely touch with the direction and the staging. You know, I've said a lot about concert productions. We're seeing a lot more concert performances come to the West End. We're seeing a lot of like new shows and new musicals being workshop through these. And when I say I want more concerts, this is a type of concert I want to see. I When you're saying something is in concert, which this, this doesn't advertise itself as a concert. No, it advertised itself as a great big Broadway show with music and lyrics by Stephen Sondheim, devised by Karen McIntosh, directed by Matthew Bourne, side by side with Julia McKenzie, to choreographed by Stephen Meir, with an all-star cast and the Sondheim Orchestra. It doesn't actually say it's in concert, but the shows that say they're in concert, this is a weird tangent. What am I talking about? <laughs> right, okay, I think I got my train of thought back. Okay, hold on. <laughs> Yeah, these concert productions are becoming more and more just like fully staged performances. And that's not the joy of a concert. The joy of a concert is to be able to see all of these different songs performed in a new way. Put actors in roles that they are perfect for, but we never quite get the chance. And I feel like even just being at the end of Act 1, I was completely and utterly sold by this as a concert. With the little hints of staging enough to give you that taste of the show. With new intentions and new ways to perform this material without having to worry about the attachment to the plot or what how it was originally done. It keeps every single moment so fresh and gives you a new look into Sondheim's music. Doing what every single concert should do, which is highlight the wonder and the power of an artist's music. 
This concert doesn't need to completely fully stage things. It can give you little hints for sure, but it doesn't need to. It's successful enough without that. And I'm only through talking about the numbers that I want to talk about in Act 1. We get a lovely little hint in Act 2 towards the start with a little medley from West Side Story. They do Somewhere and they do the Quintet Tonight. The Tonight Quintet. The Quintet of Tonight. The Tonightly Quintet. <laughs> this is performed by a lot of the younger members of the company. Namely, and I have their names right here, Harry Apps, Bradley Jaden, Marley Fenton, Christine Allardale, and Beatrice Penny Torre. Look, I think the music of West Side Story is gorgeous. It's so good, especially to Tonight Quintet, which I think was the absolute perfect choice for a song from West Side Story if you're gonna only be able to pick one or two. And yet again, they pull out the side towers like they did for Sweeney Todd, which allows different levels within the set and allows for the Romeo and Juliet style, or the West Side Story, I guess, style of talking through the fire escapes and through the windows. Adding an extra layer on top to the staging to allow this number to feel really unique in the show. Straight after this, we get the female cast of the show getting to do Broadway Baby, and my lord. I mean, you get Body Langford just coming out casually doing the splits. Just casually? You're like, come on, girl! <laughs> they stage it as they're like begging to a producer to cast them all. And seeing all these cars trying to one-up each other and <laughs> doing the tricks and everything. Oh my god, it's so good. Oh my god, it's so good. This concert is so good, I'm running out of words to tell you how good it is. And to go from that, you get another number with some of the male cast members, Gavin Lee, Damien Hubley, and Jason Pennycook, doing Everybody Ought to Have a Maid, which is hilarious. And to pack up this medley of comedic Sondheim numbers, you finish off with You Gotta Get a Gimmick. Camp. Bring out Bernadette Peters in a helmet with a trumpet. Just... <laughs> I... <laughs> It had the audience in complete stitches as she takes off her helmet, turns around, bends over, and plays <laughs> the trumpet through her legs. I just... Brilliant. It's so good. Now, Act 2 was complete of a lot of the Sondheim numbers that I'm less familiar with. It had a lot of numbers from shows like Follies... And even a number in there later on, which I will get to because it's my favourite number of the night, that isn't actually attached to a Sondheim musical. It's actually a one-off thing that he wrote. Bonnie Langford gets to perform I'm Still Here, but Langford seizes every single comedic moment in this song. Proving once again why she is an icon of British theatre. Jason Pennycook gets to sing Buddy's Blues from Follies, this amazing patter song, which I need to go and listen to again afterwards. Follies... Follies in this show has made me realise that I need to go watch Follies. Because, oh my god, I think I loved every single Follies number so much. But it is 100% Jason and Penny Cook's comedic moments that just sell this 100%. But what my favourite number of the night was, throughout everything, everything that was performed, was The Boy From, which is performed in this by Janie D. This number is hysterical. Not only due to the lyrics, which are brilliant, as Janie D is stuck saying these town names that are just infinitely long, as she pulls over-the-top facial expression after over-the-top facial expression. It is brilliant! I found myself going back to watch the, the last time she did this, because she did this at the first gala, and I have seen it like 10 times now. I adore this. I would pay just to see her do that live, just on her own. Just nothing else. I would pay West End prices to just see Janie D do that. Because it's so, so, so hilarious. And I think that number out of everything of the night just completely wins over the audience. It kills. As well as I think my other favourite number, again, from Act 2, is getting to see Leia Salonga do Everything's Coming Up Roses. If there is not already a version of that show coming with Leia Salonga as Mama Rose, then what are we doing? 
What are we doing? We need- I wanna see her roses turn. I wanna see her roses turn, come on! I wanna see it! I wanna see it, come on! <laughs> the absolute power behind her performance of that number is phenomenal. The passion, the power, everything on stage. Oh my god, give me her as Mama Rose! <laughs> And now we get into the problems of a concert version, is now I just want full productions that I'm doing all of these numbers. <laughs> and the musical is wonderfully summed up with this medley of group numbers from the whole cast being alive side by side. Obviously the title number, Old Friends, and the heartbreaking No A Day Goes By. It's... It sums up the show with this wonderful tribute to Sondheim. As if it wasn't already a brilliant tribute to Sondheim. <sighs> if you can't tell, I love this show. I think it was just a wonderful summation of Stephen Sondheim's influence, his powerful work, and why he is one of the most legendary musical theatre writers of all time. There is nobody like Sondheim. And I don't think there will ever be another person like Sondheim. And I think his work will live on forever and ever. This concert just completely and utterly proves why. How versatile his work is. How gorgeous his work is. Matched with some of the most talented performers currently in show business at the moment. This is an absolute treat. And if you miss it, you are utterly, utterly missing out. Go watch Sometimes Old Friends. Go and watch it. If you can't go see it live, go watch the recorded version of BBC iPlayer. It's slightly different, slightly different cast, but still gorgeous. But what do you think? What's your favorite Sondheim musical? Let me know in the comments down below. Mine's Sweeney Todd. I like it a bit Sweeney Todd. Until the words creeps up, but I like Sweeney Todd. If you did enjoy this video, please consider hitting like and subscribe, it really helps me out to the channel. Here's some links to my videos on screen right now, and a link to my Instagram if you want to drop me a follow over there. But that's it for me today, and I hope to see you next time. Bye!